let's try out free series. Of the following function, let's say we have f of x equal to 2 for x between 0 to 3 and negative 2 for x less than 0 but bigger than negative 3. Uh, so, solution. Let me first draw the graph. So if you draw the graph from 0 to 3, it takes the value of 2. And from negative 3 to 0, it takes the value of negative 2. And you're trying to find the Fourier series of it. Recall that Fourier series means what? You're trying to approximate this function as sums of sines and cosines with possible modification of a constant. So you have a0 over 2 plus sigma n from 1 through infinity of a n cosine n pi over L x plus b n sine n pi over L x. That's what free series means. Okay? We're trying to represent this function as some infinite sums of sines and cosines. Now, um, the coefficients, the formulas for the coefficients is given as follows. A n is 1 over L from negative L to L of f of x times cosine n pi over L x dx. And Bn is 1 over L from negative L to L, f of x times sine of n pi over L x. So these are the formulas. A little more explanation is needed. Uh, first of all, what is this thing L? L is uh, the number that you have for your interval. So this is from negative 3 to 3. So your L is 3 because it's negative L to positive L. We will be doing free series only on symmetric domains. And <coughs> later on, uh, we will do sine and cosine series on, on half of the domains. Uh, however, in some other engineering courses, uh, they prefer to have the domains from 0 to L and do the full, full free series like this. And in that case, the formulas look slightly different. But at least for symmetric domains, these are the formulas. <coughs> Another thing about uh, this, uh, this is that uh, if you think about what these are, uh, recall the following formula. If you have cosine of omega x, or maybe a sine of omega x, what's the form formula for the period? One period is, if omega is 1, the period is 2 pi, right? If, what's the period of cosine x? Cosine x repeats itself every 2 pi, right? Mm -hmm. If omega is 2, what happens to the period? Does it shrink or expand? It shrinks. If omega is 2, it take, you take the half, half the interval. So uh, whatever this number is, you divide this 2 pi by that number. That gives you the period, period of that, that function. Okay. So that's the formula. Right. Now, knowing this, knowing the formula for converting an angular frequency into the period, by the way, this omega is called the angular frequency, if you forgot. Uh, 
let's try to apply this formula to this thing and see what it does. Okay, so um, if I apply this formula to this one, since this is our omega, uh, <coughs> our t would be 2 pi divided by n pi over L, because that's our omega. Right? Now pi pi cancels, and dividing by a fraction is like flipping and multiplying. Keep change flip, anyone? Remember that? That's how you divide by a fraction, right? And then it's uh, 2 times L divided by N. And then see what it does. If n is 1, what period does the first function have? So for n equals to 1, what's the very, the, the, for n equals to 1, what's the period of the very first function? If n is 1, you plug it in here, you get 2L as the period, right? So you're looking at a cosine whose period is from, a uh, period is exactly 2L. So 2L is this length, right? Because this is L, and that's another L. This is 2L. So you're looking at a function whose entire period belongs to this interval. Uh, so for example, the cosine would be like that. You know, cosine would be like, like this. Okay. So one, one entire period will be exactly put, uh, put into this, this interval. Okay. What happens if n is 2? Then 2L divided by 2, that will be L, right? So we're talking about uh, another cosine function whose two periods go in here. And what if it's, it's 3? If n is 3, uh, the period of the third cosine function would be having the period's length as a third of 2L. So how many would fit in there? <coughs> You'll have three of them fitting in there, okay? Uh, a third, because it's a, the length of the period is a third of 2L, if you drew these cosine functions full period, you, you'll see that three of them fit into this. In other words, this calculation says that all the cosine functions I wrote down here would have, uh, would have some, would have uh, periods where integer multiples of their periods fit in to that, that interval, okay? So that's what it means, inter, inter, uh, and the same thing here. Uh, and therefore, if you add them up, uh, all of these functions will have, the, the sum of those functions that the total sum will ha still have this thing as a period. Uh, maybe uh, another way of explaining this is needed. So if, if, if function f has period two and Function g at period uh, say one. Then what's the period of f plus g? No, the periods don't add. What does this mean? The, the, the function values repeat every two every two intervals. And g here, it means that the function values repeat every one interval. So it's like every, every two. So it will repeat every two. Right? <coughs> so it's like this. Think about the first function, who's like that. That's that's the period of the first function. This just, just repeats itself. And a second function is something that repeats every, every one. So uh, when you think about something that's, uh, well, let's do something like this. Uh, 
And if you add these two values, let's see, if, if I add this with this, I get this, I guess the sum of the values will be something like goes up, and then maybe folds down somewhere here, and then I guess something like this, and then I think that that will be the graph if you add the two. And it's going to repeat, right? Okay. So what's the period of this new green, green curve? Two. two. This thing will repeat all the time, and this length is two. So the period will be two. Okay. So uh, however, uh, if, if you had, if, if the period of the second function is not if it, this doesn't fit evenly into this other one, then you, you have trouble. Then the co computation becomes really, really bad. So uh, here's our, our observation. If the second function's period fits evenly into the first one, then adding the two will still have a period of two. So this will have period two. We'll have this period same as f, okay? So if I had, say, h, which is a period of <coughs> 0 0.1, then f plus g plus h will have period of what? 2. It'll still have period of 2, right? And the real trouble happens if I had f, g, h, uh, let's just say another function p, whose period is, say, is 3. Um, then, yeah, then what would happen? 3, 6. It will be 6, yeah. The period will be, will repeat itself every 6, okay. because uh, this repeats every 3, say, let's say weeks. This, this is a graph of weeks, okay? So this repeats every 3 weeks, this repeats every, the values repeat every 2 weeks. So if you add the two together uh, and you drew the graph, how would it repeat? It will repeat every 6 weeks. If you Think about schedule, scheduling that, that happens, right? So in this case, because P doesn't evenly fit into F, when you add these two, the, the resulting thing doesn't have the kind of period that you would expect. So it becomes complicated. So, so that will be making things very complicated. But uh, here, if you look at this sum, you always have the, the, the later later functions to have periods that evenly fit into the, the biggest one, which is 2L. So when you add them up, the period will still be 2L. Yeah. Yes? I'm just kind of confused. Like, what's L and N like with respect to uh, the period and frequency? I think you said L? L is the interval, right? I just, L is the interval, yes. Okay. Yeah. What would N be like with this equation? N is, N changes from 1 through infinity. So you don't, you don't have a single function. You have infinitely many functions added together. Okay. Okay. And these are our functions uh, that all fit it, fit evenly into this 2L length. So at the end of the day, when you add them up, the entire thing will be still periodic with 2L. Okay? Did that make sense? All right. So, yeah, if, if you've ever done any kind of scheduling thing, what I said probably makes sense. I mean, if, if something repeats every week and another event repeats every month and you wanted to know what how the schedule operates you know that the entire thing just repeats itself every month right yeah so, uh, i think that that should have been a better way to understand this okay so that was just a conceptual approach to what's happening uh, but coming back coming back uh, so, representing a function as this sum means that even if your function is only defined for values from negative 3 to 3, the moment you write it like this, you're, you're defining your function not just here, it will be a periodic function. The right side is a periodic function, so you're, you're trying to define it as a periodic function. Okay. It's a periodic function. Uh, and furthermore, 
if you copy and paste and paste and you think about the periodic function that you get by making this function as a periodic function, then there's some questions that arise immediately, which is, hey, you're adding cosines and sines, which are continuous functions, right? So how could we get something that's not continuous? Well, it turns out that if you add infinitely many of them, sometimes you can add uh, infinitely many continuous functions to get functions that are not continuous. Uh, but one caveat is that uh, this equality is an almost everywhere equality. Meaning that points where you have the jump discontinuity will no, will no longer be the same. So Whenever the function is continuous, the, the left and right will be exactly the same. But the points where it has jump discontinuity it will be different. So imagine extending this, so taking this and copy and paste to the next one. So you get this. Then you have a jump discontinuity, right? If you take this and copy and paste to before, you still have a jump discontinuity. So in this graph here, these are the three places where the graph has jump discontinuity. Whenever you have a jump discontinuity, the right side function will take the value that's average of the jump. So if, you, if it went from here to there, what's the average of these two values? Zero. It's zero. So the right side will have these as the values. It will be zero here and zero there. So uh, the, the approximation that you get on the right side will actually have the following graph. It will be the graph will be like here, here, so it'll be 2, negative 2, and 0. And then uh, you have 0 here, 0 here, and 0 there. And this will be actually copied and pasted over again. So it'll be 0, negative 2, 0, positive 2, 0, negative 2, and it'll be uh, you'll, you'll copy this left and right, it goes further. Okay. So that's the kind of function that you obtain if you just graph the right side after finding all the values by using these. Okay. So, uh, so that's, that's what we're aiming for. Now let me just say one last thing. So if you, if you took this to be your f, then what would f of 0 be then? If we took this side as the f. Now over here, f of 0 is 2, right? But with this, our new f, what's our f of 0? Look at the graph. f of 0 is 0, right here, right? What's f of 1? It'll be 2. What's f of 3? It'll be 0 again. It'll, it'll come down here again. Okay. f of negative 3 will be? 0 again. OK? So. Uh, sometimes I might ask uh, this, these questions of, uh, if you had a free series, what are the values there? Okay. As long as I pick somewhere it's continuous, you just go back, fall back to the original function and take that value. Okay. But whenever you have a jump discontinuity, you have to take the half of the jump, the average of the jump. Yes? Is there a reason why in that second graph the dots are not filled in? Um, for the points at above two? Or in yeah, yeah, so, so these are not the, the actual values. These are the values. No, but I mean... But in the first... In the first, oh, in the the first one, since it has an equal sign, equal sign here, so these should be the actual values. So for this function, f of 0 is 2, and f of 3 is also 2. Over here, f of 0 is 0, and f of 3 is 0. So that's, that's the difference. That's for a whole different, that's not for the first function. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if you have the Fourier series represented one, that's what happens. Okay.